Welcome to the official Autodesk Inventor Podcast. My name is Garen Gardner. I'm an Inventor Product Manager. This is episode number 41. And last episode, we talked a bit about some of the basic assembly constraints. Uh, we talked about mate, angle, tangent, and insert, and then the different ways to apply those various constraints. Uh, this episode, I wanted to talk about the other types of constraints, which is motion, transitional, and the, the constraint sets. And I received some feedback. Uh, I actually was surprised on how many people uh, really liked and, and got a lot of great information from the last episode. So hopefully this goes uh, you know, a little above and beyond um, what, what you may already know about constraints. We'll use some of those other lesser known types of constraints. So I'm going to start off in the Motion tab. And today I'm, I'm using Inventor 2011. And pretty much uh, the majority of what you see today is all in Inventor 2010, and a lot of it, a lot of it is in 2009 as well. So it's uh, a lot of the things you'll see. It's not uh, specific to Inventor 2011, but I'm going to go into the constraint dialog, and you'll notice a lot of the things that we covered last episode are all under the assembly tab. I'm going to go over to the motion tab, and this particular one you'll notice that I have two different types. I have a rotational, this is for two gears, and then I have a rotational and a transitional. The the rotational I think are a little bit more straightforward, but uh, I'm going to go over the, the rotational transitional and I think you'll be able to, to get the gist for both of those. So to start off, I'm going to first go to a positional or a view representation that just has the components that I'm interested in. So let's take a look at this side view and you'll notice that I have I have this positioned in about the right position. You'll notice as I drag it, nothing happens. And we want to be able to set it up where when I drag on, on this particular, uh, the arbor press, as I rotate the handle, that it lifts that, the, the um, plate. So let's, or that arm. So one of the things that I did to set this up is I actually went into this particular gear and, and put my central uh, circular diameter so that you know basically where my teeth are meshing um, that's that's my main radius that I really want to take advantage of so I've got a construction surface in there and I'm just gonna go back into my constraints you'll notice that I go over to the motion tab I'm gonna tell it that we're doing the rotational transitional and you'll notice by the icon that the first thing that it's looking for is the rotational piece so this is gonna be the the rotational gear I'm just going to select that and then I'm also going to come over here you'll notice for the second selection set it's wanting an edge or a flat face and I'm just going to grab this vertical edge so between that information it's actually calculating my gear ratio so as this turns it's going to move that up or down now I just eyeballed that surface so it's not exact so I can come in and modify that to to be a more precise number which is nice you can tweak it you know if, if you've just kinda eyeballed and then you wanna to give it a more precise number you can do that later and then of course you can change the direction that as this rotates to make sure it's going in the right direction which I think by default it is but we'll we'll try that so I'm gonna hit OK and you'll notice now as I grab this and drag that it's automatically constraining those together. So it's not doing it based on contact, it just knows the length and the basically that ratio that it needs to put in place. Now as I mentioned, I just kind of eyeballed this surface so I have a more precise value that I can use in here. So I'm just going to come in and grab that part and I'm going to do let's, uh, let's make that a little bit more a little bit more precise. I'm going to do 3.14 Four, two. So now, if I go to this side, you'll notice that as I drag this up or down, it's it's pretty uh, pretty spot on. I can see exactly how that works. So now, if we go back up here to our default view rep, as I grab this handle and spin it, we can see exactly what it's doing. Now, the last episode we talked about contact and a few things. So, you know, I could put, I could turn the contact set on for this component and the plate. So when I'd rotate this around that come in contact, it would actually stop. 
Um, I could also add a, a um, angle constraint or an offset constraint and drive that so I could see this mechanism work through driving a constraint. So that's our first type of constraint that we'll talk about is a motion constraint and that's really about it. Now you'll notice I have an, an expand button. This is new to 2011 and this allows me to add limits and I'm not going to discuss this today. I did do a, a, a post on my blog recently on what this is but it allows you to have kind of a starting and a stopping um, spot. So if you wanted to have an angle or an offset value like an actuator where it only could move 10 inches you could put that value in there and then it would only let you drag that amount. So let's go over to the next one. The next constraint I want to do is, you know, I may have like a rolling cam or something that I want to follow a path. So we can see that I have kind of a crazy surface here and I want a follower to follow along that. Now if it's only if it's only one face, I can come in and use tangent. So I could use tangent between the roller and one of these faces, but it wouldn't know how to fall off to the next face. You know, we have multiple tangent faces here, and it wouldn't really know how to transition that over. So I'm going to go into constraints, I'm going to go to transitional, and this allows me to select two, two surfaces, and then you'll notice now as I drag this around, it's actually transitioning across all three, well there's multiple surfaces there, and it's just transitioning across. Now similar to what we did the other day as well, you know I could come in and add a um, flush constraint and do and drive that constraint and we could see it just drive it along here kind of animating it. So that's a, that's a pretty cool thing you can do if you're doing like a cam follower or something and you'll notice that you can flip it to the other side depending on how you drag it. So I'm just going to drag it up top and then make sure I keep it up there just based on how I drag it. So again that's the transitional constraint so it's very similar to a tangent constraint however this one allows it to traverse multiple faces so if I wanted um, I could actually drag it if I made these a little bit bigger fillets I could drag it all the way around this particular component now you can't drive these types of constraints so I couldn't go to my transitional right click and tell it to drive it because it's not like a, a, an angle or a mate constraint where it has kind of a starting and a stopping value. Alright, so the next one that I'm going to cover, and we'll wrap this particular episode up, is a new constraint that was added to 2010. And this is a constraint set. And one of the things that we heard is, you know, many of you wanted to be able to have a local or a world coordinate system that you could you could define yourself so basically a user coordinate system you could define so for example this particular car body you may want to say that the nose on this car body is the the zero 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 regardless what my origin is in the assembly and you can manage that so an example of this is I'm gonna go into one of these parts I'm just gonna edit it and you'll notice that I'm editing this particular part and I have a new option in here that's a user coordinate system and I can come in and just place that in my scene I can drag it around I can place it where I want I can just dynamically drag it or I can pick one of the edges and hit zero and then I'm gonna do zero on the Z and I'm gonna do zero on the Y so I'm putting the coordinate system for this back panel up here at the zero 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 and again I could I could um, I could position that wherever I wanted but I know that I wanted at the zero 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 so from there I can just right click and finish it up so now when I return up a level I can go into my constraints and I can go to a constraint set and that allows me to go to the coordinate system I, I presently have the coordinate systems turned off you can come in and have it show the triads here so if you just go to your object visibility, turn that on. So now I can say, you know, we want to constrain this triad to this triad, and I can apply those. Let's make sure that I get those. So it, it actually moved the, the trunk over, apply that. I could use a triad of these other components, and it moves them over. So instead of having to add a constraint, you know, a, a um, three different constraints to lock that into place, if I have a world coordinate system, it'll automatically just constrain all three of those together.